Hi, my name is Olivia Ho, and I'm the founder of The Give and Grow. So growing up, I had a lot of energy, um, was always bothering my older sister, always bothering my parents to um, get active, get outside, do something. But um, I just found that I had so much energy to expend as a kid that I gravitated towards sports, whereas my older sister gravitated towards dance and music. And so spent a lot of my time outside with all of the neighborhood kids playing basketball, soccer, baseball, um, biking, skateboarding, everything. As long as I was outside, I was happy. Growing up half Filipino, basketball is a really, really big part of their culture. At a really young age, I gravitated towards playing basketball, which I played throughout elementary school, high school. And unfortunately, I had an injury in high school that stopped uh, my career, I guess, a little bit early. But um, I always knew that basketball was really important to me, and I always wanted to find ways to continue to stay connected to it. I ended up taking kinesiology at McMaster. I wanted to be an athletic therapist. I thought that I could work with the Raptors and uh, be a physiotherapist for them. Coming out of university, when doing a postgraduate program at Mohawk College, I took a cardiac sonography program, um, which centers around ultrasounds of the heart. And I was also working as a coach at MLSC Launchpad, um, which is a kids sports facility downtown Toronto, servicing mainly the Regent Park youth. I knew that while working in sonography that I needed to still stay connected to sports somehow. And so Launchpad was a really good way for me to stay immersed in basketball and being around the local community as well. So working at the hospital during the pandemic um, was obviously not, you know, the easiest of times and so I started making these basketball planters. I had some old basketballs just in my closet, started cutting them, spray painting them in my condo parking garage and then um, just posted them to my Instagram. And then I heard a lot of good feedback from family and friends saying, you know what, you should start a little side gig. Why not um, make this little side hustle, especially while working in the hospital, something that could keep me busy. I thought about the girls specifically that I worked with at Launchpad and uh, the youth that I worked with there and thought to myself, you know, how can I use the Give and Grow as a platform to stay connected to them? And so started doing these workshops where we could customize some basketball planters with the youth and they could have a chance to kind of be creative, but at the same time, try to understand how plants can relate to our own personal growth and how the game of basketball has so much to teach us that's just not on the court, but in the classrooms and in everyday life as well. And so we go through a whole growth workshop where we talk about the importance of sport and how that can be applied to our everyday lives. And so I ended up kind of bridging kind of those two worlds really unexpectedly um, and ended up getting the attention of the Toronto Raptors. When I was in my last year of high school, I had a really bad knee injury that um, stopped me from playing basketball for a little bit. And so I was pretty upset about that at the time, but I knew very quickly that basketball was really important to me. I was passionate about it and I, immediately tried to find ways to stay involved in the sport, creating this kind of own path that I have through the Give and Grow. Um, I think it's really interesting because I've always wanted to work with young girls in sport. Um, and I thought that I had to do that through, you know, athletic therapy or as a coach. But I think that the Give and Grow has allowed me to create a platform where I can connect with young girls and it doesn't always have to be on the court or on the field. Coming back into you know the gym space after being away for so long or doing some online programming and sport programming, um, it was really interesting to see kind of the dropout. And we know that during these transitionary periods, um, there are a lot of moments for dropout in sport in general. And so with the pandemic, I feel like that is just what accelerated that dropout a little bit more because there was no access to the facilities themselves. And a lot of times with sport, we see competition, we see aggression. Um, but a lot of these young girls, when talking to them, they just want social connection. They want mentorship. They want people that look like them, that are their leaders. So growing up, I didn't have a lot of coaches that really looked like me. A lot of them were men. Um, and so as much as I love sport, I didn't feel like there was that extra level of comfort, maybe your mentorship with them. And so I really try to think about, you know, what would 
15 year old Olivia want out of these different mentorship opportunities or as a coach. And I try to be that for the next generation. So I think that um, it's really important for me to also amplify the voices of other um, BIPOC women and give them opportunities. So I'm really intentional about the people that I hire, the people that I work with. The WNBA game that was in Toronto was honestly a life-changing experience for me. Um, it was really cool to see a lot of my different worlds collide. And so um, as a small business owner and with the Give and Grow, you know, we hosted some workshops alongside some community members before the game. We also partnered with um, NBA Canada and the WNBA to sell some of our planters and have a very special edition um, WNBA planter for the game. It was really nice to be able to just celebrate and stop and highlight, you know, all the people that have been working really hard you know 24 7 to um, amplify girls and women when it comes to sport what basketball really represents is kind of a vessel for for change a vessel for uh, conversation around how we can continue to empower young girls and women through sport and so eventually uh, the give and grow will be a community it'll be a service it'll be um, an initiative that will continue to impact as many young girls and women as possible all over the world. Grit is really important um, in terms of, you know, just keep going. Wake up every day, show up, show up for yourself, show up for your community. The power of sport um, means creating impact, not just on the court, not just on the field, but how do we continue to use sport as a vessel, as a tool for life skills that we can apply to our everyday lives. One tip that I would share with young girls about being your authentic self is to just stay true to the things that you love. I think um, as long as we continue to surround ourselves with things and people that make us happy, um, who knows where that'll take us and good things will happen. If I had to say one thing to my younger self, it would be you're exactly where you need to be. Don't overthink everything. Don't over question everything. Um, continue to kind of just go with the flow and be the person that you are. My favorite candy is Sour Patch Kids, specifically the red ones. My favorite hobby is going on a bike ride, hanging out at a park with friends. When I'm on the road driving, you'll most likely hear Drake on my playlist. My favorite movie is Coach Carter. One of my favorite things about Toronto is going on a hike at Evergreen Brickworks. Works.